True Footy Podcast 25. Thanks for joining us, guys. Wanted to kick off by saying a very happy birthday <sighs> to the number one man, Jesse. Bloody happy birthday, mate. <laughs> Thank happy you very birthday. much. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. When was your birthday? When was it? Yeah. Uh, the draft day. Thursday. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were just saying that because you really liked the draft. <laughs> it's like yeah. the second birthday. Yeah. So that's true. Favorite day I also year. noticed you turned your Facebook off so no one knew it was your birthday. Yeah. Mm. Sneak. Which yeah. screwed me over. Yeah, it screwed my sister over too. She hasn't like, yeah. sent me a birthday yet. <laughs> but, but I feel oh, I feel a lot better now that your sister's yeah. got caught by the same trap I did. I no, feel that's a lot right. Better. I actually feel bad because it's not her fault because I said it wrong. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, it was a bit of a stitch up though because I took uh, a day, an early, uh, had an early finish at work to watch the draft, and uh, last minute found out the Eagles weren't even involved on day one. So that was a bit <laughs> of a stitch up, but it do be like that sometimes. Do yeah, like that. but what what did you think of the Eagles picks in? Uh, just straight off the bat reaction. Straight off the bat, just a couple of four straight dudes just yep. talking about the draft. Um, I, I think... Uh, happy? Yeah, I was pretty pretty yeah. happy with it. But I just, birthday present? I resented having to wait so long because, uh, yeah. you know, firstly you yeah. had to sit through day one and then you had to sit through the Eagles trading down three times. Well, I was listening to SEN um, and for, they thought that the Eagles had a pick on the first day. And right. so the draft had finished and they were just sitting there just like being like, oh, Eagles should start any second. This is like a professional radio station. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, oh, no, wait. And they're like, it's actually not till tomorrow, sorry. <laughs> to be fair, the AFL said round one was going to be on day one. Yeah. And arbitrarily decided to end at one pick before the end of round one. The Eagles yeah. was still in round one. If you look at the AFL draft tracker, yeah. the Eagles still had one pick to go. Yeah. And that, but they just decided to cut off at pick 19. I remembered saying they had a rehearsal for the draft on the Wednesday and it was a complete night of shambles, apparently. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But to see how everything ran through, apparently it was a shambles. <laughs> I liked, I got to be honest, I was, it kind of pissed me off how long they took to get through that first round. Like... Mm. I'd just finished work, like, put it on my phone, and, um, it, like, I was listening for, like, two hours just to get through 20 players, and I was like, well, this is obviously what's going to happen with just doing the first round on, on yeah, one day, they want to spread it out yeah. a bit, but, oh, come on, I had to wait an hour and a half just to hear Freo's pick at number, like, Yeah, 14. I was spilling, because I had an exam at 5.30, so I'd started watching at 4, I only got through the first six or seven picks before I had to go to my exam. <laughs> Yeah. Lee Matthews described it as a perfect exercise in time wasting, which is pretty accurate. Like yeah, no, you, you, they could have done that. You know? Not unlike my exam. <laughs> 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 it's just so com- so like commercial. It, yeah, yeah. Just reeks of making some money. It's like showing that video um, they show um, with Nat Fife calling Sturt, I think it was. Yeah, he had it yeah. on speakerphone yeah. and they like recorded it and yeah. then broadcast that. And I was like, come on. So <laughs> obviously a marketing. Yeah, it's like the same how they like yeah. mic out the kids on grand final day um, when they shake their hands <laughs> at the end. Like, you're my champion. Like, <laughs> no one needs to hear this. Like, <laughs> this my favourite moment was appropriate. when Maston forgot to give the kid his hat. Oh, was yeah. that Maston? Yeah. Yeah, bloody dog. The Eagles did that last time as <laughs> well. <laughs> in 06, 06, like half the team forgot to give it oh, out. And then they were yeah. slammed in the media for it. Yeah. Was it the Trunks? half of the team known for getting up to no good? Uh, a few of know. those bright know. characters. It's like, who the f- cares? Don't think there's a relation. Who, who seriously cares? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to give a kid a hat. Yeah. After he just won a premiership. Mm. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's probably the most important moment of that kid's life, yeah. Joycey. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to define them. Someone will people know those hat. kids the rest of their lives. The hat. people that got a hat. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they still get a hat anyway. Come on. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a <laughs> slow news thing. Well, before we get into the uh, proper ins and outs of the draft, we should welcome back Louis. Um, hey. I reckon last going? time Louis was here, we had probably about a hundred subscribers, mm-hmm. and. Uh, we're up to like over 1,200 now. Yeah, so we dropped back down to 100. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so what I'm saying is most people who watch the show don't know who you Actually, are. Actually, yeah. That's <laughs> true, yeah. You're the first name in the YouTube banner. You're the first face, rather. But um, yeah, just yeah. a stranger. A lot of people true. think you're Greg from... They probably the think he's like Jamie off Joe Rogan, just sits behind the camera or True, something. yeah. True. That was originally you. Yeah, it was, man. Yeah. Are kidding? Um, but welcome back from your Thank you guys. short you trip for the World Cup. Yeah, and come back to the <laughs> end of the out footy to be season. A bit of a seven, eight month, yeah, journey. Yeah, unfortunately, missing most of the AFL season. You got to yeah. Melbourne for the grand final. I though. did. Yeah, I did yeah. get to. Yeah, went through. Um, yeah, I was in Scotland at the time and travelled all the way through America to wow. get to Melbourne for the game. 
Got without tickets. Back. Without tickets, yeah. One tickets the night before. That's crazy. So, <laughs> be a ridiculous story. In a so naked crazy. juggling contest as well. That's yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. That's ju- juggling those naked midgets as yeah. well. It seemed very unofficial. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was down in a dark alley. It was an eccentric millionaire with a few tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I'd juggle some naked midgets to get a ticket to if Freya yeah. made the grandy. It's yeah. not like that movie Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger, where <laughs> just, I just had to. I was going to say beat off and a bunch of other competitors <laughs> for that sound. What are the wrong words used there? Uh, are you thinking of um, that Christmas one with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Jingle all the way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen this movie. It sounds terrible. That's a, oh no, it's, it's a Christmas it's, play. Yeah. It's a, yeah, you have to watch it. It's okay. a Christmas play standard. No, but thank you for welcoming me back. It's good <laughs> to be back. No worries, no worries. Um, but yeah, so overall, negative thoughts about the format, the two-day format. Mm. I thought the fact that it was the second round was... Uh, on Friday morning when everyone had work was stupid yeah absolutely uh, like I, I loved the draft and I wanted to watch it and I work personally I'd rather just save it for a Saturday or a Sunday and do the whole thing yeah like they did last year mm. when we came and watched it here yeah uh, the one thing I did like was that they had the rookie draft on the same day true true you rather than normally they have it like yeah it's a few like days later two, yeah. two or three days later on yeah. the Monday I think used to be a couple of weeks um, even so yeah. Before that, so yeah. Part of me almost feels relief for those rookie players that they don't have to wait another like yeah, two days after the draft because that's pretty cruel. Yeah. It's exactly. like they just find out on the day whether they're in or they're not, and then they can just True. get on with their life. If move on. But yeah, even to the working point, I remembered reading an article about one of Freo's later draft days, the mature duo out of Williamstown. Yeah. Apparently, one of them was working, and his boss was sitting at home watching it in case he got taken and rang him yeah. while he was working for him, saying, "Yeah, you just got drafted." His <laughs> boss is obviously. The laziest. He's like, <laughs> you might get drafted, but you keep working. I'll hold and down. I'll down. watch the draft. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll, I'll hold down the fort, all right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll be the first to know your future. I think Mark Hutchings was um, with a client. He was a PT, and he was yeah. with a client when he got a text saying, "Congratulations during the national <laughs> yeah. draft." Yeah. Oh, you hear lots of stories like that, don't you? Especially in the rookie draft, because that's when yeah. the guys like 20, 21, 22 get taken. Mm. Lots of stories of, yeah, guys being on building sites. I think Luke Ryan from Freo. Yeah. Yeah, that happened to him. It was a Sparky or something. Something like that, or a Carpenter. Yeah. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, a few good news stories coming out. Yeah, that's right. Um, Well, I figured for this format, boys, we can do what we did last year, but maybe a bit quicker and not a three-hour special. But if we go through each club... (laughs) No, I don't know, maybe three hours. Let's see where it goes. Nah. Uh, We'll go through each club quickly. Um... And sort of discuss the picks that they took and see what we think about them. So, okay. Alphabetical? It's up to you. We might as well go yeah, now because I wrote it down, it. so please don't okay. say no. Cause and it's easier. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> Let's go um, chronologically. What, by... what, when they were founded? Yeah. <laughs> by founding date. All right, starting with university. Um, no. So Adelaide, boys. One of the bigger players in this draft, naturally, we know that they, they traded in Four picks inside of the top 20. Yeah. Um, probably not by choice. I think that's because they lost like Lever and uh, Charlie Cameron. Or maybe not Charlie Cameron. But yeah, you know, they traded these picks in because they've lost a bunch of players. Beach so, McGov. Yeah, that's yeah, all right. That's it. Well. Um, so it was really kind of a case of replenishing their stocks. And I think most people, I think especially you, Bush, you to kind of were thinking they were going to um, seize a lot of the South Australian talent on offer, but it didn't seem to be the case. Did I it? thought they'd try more aggressively to move up to get it at least, but yeah. evidently not. They didn't end up with any of them. Well, not maybe the, they did Not try. the big three anyway. But we, we don't. Yeah, maybe they probably they did, did try and just picks inside of the top 10. Deal, yeah. Which is fair enough. Was, because the consensus was Gold Coast and Carlton were asking mm. a shitload for those top three picks. Mm. They took, took one of the uh, very few, even if you want to call it a surprise, one of the very few surprises of the first round um, in taking Jones over Caldwell. Caldwell was True. definitely fancied to go before Jones. Um, but I really like the pick of Jones. And I, it's good that they haven't necessarily just gone the SA talent. Could have easily maybe reached a bit and gone for Valente or something like that. Haightley yeah. was still on the board. Yeah. Haightley's the other one, yeah. Yeah. That's true. So, um, and it's- really good player in McHenry as well. Real character there. Yeah, true. I think yeah. um, I think a good thing with these Tassie boys like Chase Jones is they, I guess there's no go home factor. So if you're yeah, worried exactly. about retention, then you know Tassie's not even that far. But uh, yeah. but yeah, right. Coldwell was probably the more fancy choice. I wonder if there was some character testing involved in that, and they thought Coldwell was a flight risk. 
Yeah, I'm yeah, not sure. We have no idea. Sometimes from, that can From what I can gather, it, it just seems like they rated Jones as the better player, Yeah. to be fair. I wonder if this is the first time we've had two Tassie boys in the top 10. I think, yeah, three were drafted, I think, in the entire draft. This is like in 2016, they had no Tasmanians drafted at all. Yeah, right. So, it's probably, yeah. So it's going, good. It's a big deal. Like, it's a big yeah. deal. Some you know, real good get them a yeah, team. Send Gold 10. Coast down there. Good I think it's footballers those Tassies have come out of there. I think it's more likely North, like South yeah. Camp there, because they, I think they're pushing for seven games there. I was reading a thing seven. where Kennett was saying he reckons Hawthorne have been pushed out in favour of North Melbourne, which is Tassie. It is a bit, it's a pretty like home ground advantage down there in Blundstone Arena. Like, yeah, they play, they North play, play that ground really well. Down there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's not hard, not an easy place for any team to no, play it's at. not. Fremantle have been absolutely flogged there. We like, got flogged quite there quite a lot. Year as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, West Coast there. have Just lost there. Just turning up, basically. Yeah, <laughs> true. I think they can negotiate the wind really well down there, which I'd imagine is a massive um, home ground advantage. Mm. But, uh, yeah. And then the, uh, the Crows picked up Will Hamill. It was probably slightly underrated halfback going into the draft. Yep. Wasn't talked about much as a top 30 prospect, but I think personally that's, that's about right. So, um, And of course they traded out one of their picks to Carlton and have banked a potentially early pick next year. What do you guys think about that? Um, that was to make it clear. So they traded out pick 19 in this draft live with Carlton um, and they've swapped first rounders next year. So Carlton, I assume, will probably finish bottom four. So yeah. that's probably going to be worth about pick four for like 15 and 19. Well, yeah. um, yeah. Assuming Adelaide Stick. finished that high up the ladder to warrant mm. being 15, they could. They're betting on themselves, aren't they? Yeah. That's yeah. Kind of Which is reasonable stance and taken, considering they did have a down year compared to the year before. They've still got a lot of talent there. You'd probably yeah. think maybe somewhere between that, like, 8 and 15. Yeah, I'd put them in that middle rung of yeah. the competition. I'd yeah. say. That's a great piece of business, I think, by Adelaide. Especially because. Really it gives them, it spreads out their picks as well because they had four mm. picks in the top 21 or whatever. Yeah. Um, and now that they've got, you know, at least two early first rounders next year. So, I mean, it could work out for Carlton yeah. as well. Yeah, also, I didn't mind it from um, Carlton's Stock, perspective. Stock is not a bad player. And yeah, if Adelaide have a similar season, Carlton could get maybe a pick seven or eight as well. If it ends um, up above pick 14 or something, I think Carlton win on points or something. The reason I probably right. don't like it from Carlton perspective is I think Carlton are really crying out for just like top end talent. Mm. And I think sacri- you're sacrificing potentially, like potentially a freaking number one, number two, number three player. Mm. Yeah, very true. Like that could have been this year, it was like Sam Walsh or Jack Lacosius, they could be sacrificing a player like that. It's interesting um, that like a few teams traded. Like out of the draft kind of thing, and into especially that yeah. that kind of range, and yeah. in for future picks next year, yeah. or like so for such a supposedly super draft, I guess a lot of teams uh, think that after the top ten, maybe top 12, 13 players, they just kind of dropped off considerably, yeah, was, and that's why they're the, more likely to trade out. There seems to be a lot more um, sort of list analysis these days mm. in terms of looking at. Uh, are your team a premiership chance? Yeah, like, like if so, you're probably not quite as keen on the draft. Mm. Otherwise, um, yeah, more keen to draft players in. You see, like Fremantle, for, from perspective, have taken a lot of like 19 to 22-year-olds in the last couple of years. And I, you can see that's from a reaction point that they want players to have an immediate impact. Mm. Don't want to have to wait around for those 18-year-olds to come good. Yeah. So there's there's a, a lot of um, list analysis, analysis going on, yeah, and it's cool. exciting as fans. Mm. Just the professionalism in terms of drafting things like that. Probably in the last ten years, you say ten fifteen years, it's gone yeah. through the absolute roof. Yeah. Even that, even with the live trading, there was it's already been exploited. We'll talk about it later, I'm sure, with the Sydney stuff. But it's already been mm. people have already game planned for it and it's true. Yeah. made smart moves based off it and you you were talking about you, you were saying oh how predictable has this first round been and that's because of the amount of coverage we have mm. compared to five five even five years ago yeah um, that's true yeah yeah I, I guess it's it's still always hard though to pick what clubs are thinking you know what i mean there's like a media consensus you, you kind of combine the thoughts of nightmare or on big footy slash crystal wear on espn AFL Draft Central, uh, Callum Toomey, these guys are like the main um, the media McDaddies. pundits that... The what? The McDaddies Yeah, the drafting. Draft Daddies, yeah. yeah. <laughs> True Footy Podcast is the other one. Um, yes. So, you know, you, you can kind of come up with a consensus, but at the end of the day, you, you've got 18 clubs there who have completely different rankings who are probably not paying too much attention to the media. 
So there's always, I think, room for like a bolter. And and I think we did see one that West Coast probably had Xavier O'Neill. That was probably mm. the first big surprise for me personally. Um, and Valenti sliding that far was another mm. surprise for me based on media expectations. Um, but yeah. Yeah. It's like if you're as a drafting team, like, or your list managers and things, you're not leaking a lot to the media, are you? Not no, really no, no. You're leaking like, what you want to leak. Gross. <laughs> Gross. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the draft, yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> so like, so even if as good as you are, you're still kind of. I'm assuming like the counterpoints and things. Like you just, you. It's got to be some uh, misinformation put out as well. Yeah, but surely. Like, yeah. Sure, you're, just, you're basically guessing. Like, yeah. you're just guessing on what you think a team mm. needs. At the moment. You're not getting, no one's. Yeah, there's no no leaks. One thing I've liked about the Eagles is that there's. Uh, as, an, as a fan, there's been absolutely no leaks about who they're going to take usually. Mm. Like, well, since Sheed, Sheed was the worst kept secret ever. That's but true. since then, like, yeah. Venables came out of nowhere. Brander wasn't talked about at all. Um, yeah. O'Neill, like, nobody would have seen Brander that. fell in the elapsed to an extent, though, based on where, again, yeah. media expectation and whatnot. A little bit. Uh, a little bit. But again, um, the talk was about looking for a midfielder. We ended up mm. taking the best yeah. available tour. But yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um, Brisbane Lions, another interesting club. I. Uh, I um, I posted a bit a fan of draft on Big Footy, uh, in the lead up to the draft. One of my first efforts, and um, had Eli Smith going to Brisbane at pick twenty one. <sighs> Got roasted for it by a Brisbane fan. <laughs> Boom! Pick twenty one, Eli Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Just stuff you. Yeah, yeah, you dog. But if you watch this, thank you very much, and please hit subscribe. Yeah, yeah hit subscribe button. <laughs> no, um, interesting. They've gone very midfield heavy. Um, I don't think they were expected to. I think they were uh, expected to take sort of like. Um, I think they need some like general defenders and maybe some forwards as well. But they went Eli Smith, Jared Berry's brother Thomas, Tom Joyce from uh, East Fremantle, McFadden's an academy player, kind of like a stringer style midfielder forward, and then uh, and then they took a defender at the end. But yeah, four first up mids, which was interesting. Um, what do you guys think of them taking Thomas Berry? Brother of Jared. I don't know much about where he's supposed to go or where he's ranked as a talented player, but in terms of good story, it's like a good thing. Like, Barry's an <laughs> upstanding character. Yeah. His brother's assumably the same, seem like a good family. You want those sort of people in your club, especially in a place like Brisbane where they have had the retention issues. You want those good characters in the club. Mm. So there's a good culture. People want to stay. They feel happy. I feel, cause it's I feel probably like, good for retention and that sort of stuff. I feel like yeah. it's a bit of a reach, but again, I think the fact of that he is the brother of the player that they already have there and they do have retention issues is obviously that just is worth, I know, 20 spots or saying in the draft. Yeah. The draft is. Like, True. How about, um, who did they take from, didn't they just trade, was it Murdoch from Geelong, his big friend? Lika McCarthy. Oh, McCarthy, McCarthy, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that what you're that. no, that's, yeah. that's true. That's true. They're trying to become a family club. A bit easier on the dad as well. Um, Jared Berry's dad travels to every Brisbane game from country Victoria. Oh, yeah. So he'll probably just yeah. move to Brisbane now if he's going to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. At this point, he's got two kids on AFL money. They can surely support him between yeah. the two of them. Yeah. It's yeah. a nice story. But... And your cousin, Tom Joyce, from mm. Meets Romano? Just kidding. He's not his cousin. But... Uh -huh. I say that about every Joyce in the AFL. Yeah, you do. There was a Jesse Joyce, yeah. our love child, at the Gold Coast Suns. Our love child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're his son. And maybe How old is this kid? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> He's probably like two years younger than us. Yeah. yeah. No, that was a rough time. <laughs> rough trip <laughs> to <laughs> Thailand, that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's probably all we really need to say about the Lions. Uh, I'd say I'm, I'm very impressed with the Eli Smith. I think he's going to be a good um, inside mid. And I think... I think he complements their mids fairly well because, you know, they've got a bit of a midget brigade going. You've got Zorko, you've got Neil, and you've got... Uh, they took Zach Bailey in the first round last year. Eli Smith is a... McCluggage, Rayner will probably start going through there. Yeah, McCluggage is more of an outside mid, but this yeah. Eli Smith is... And I think Rayner will probably be like a first receiver. He's like an inside mid, but like yeah. Dusty, you want, yeah. you want him receiving the ball rather than dishing it out. Yeah. Eli Smith is that real, like, Mitch Robinson type um, yeah. inside mid and... You know, potentially better. So. Crazy. Mm. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he seems like a gun, but yeah. All right, moving on to the Blues. I think everyone saw that coming with pick one. Mm -hmm. What would you have done, Joycey, with pick one? I know you're a massive Isaac Rankin fan. Do you think the Blues is the right choice? Yeah, probably. 
Uh, I think I said a few weeks ago I probably would go Lukosius. Um, oh, it's just so tough. I guess they they really do need mids, but if Lukosius is as good as what everyone says, then I don't think you could pass up a talent like that. But mm. jury's still out. Sam Walsh looks very, very, very good. I got yeah. to say, looking at his highlights, he's super quick, real good turner. Almost looks a little bit like a Paddy Dangerfield sort of. Mm. Just sort of guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I think they've probably got a good pick. I think um, they got some some real good young talent in that midfield now. Mm. If uh, they can get Dow, Walsh, Cripps. Like that's set a build. Yeah, that's a really solid mid for a good like 10 years now. So, I think that's definitely a good, a good um, foundation for Carlton. And I think they're in a better spot because of they're drafting than they were a few years ago. True. This is why I like their trade into the first round. So we just talked about how they traded um, next year's first for Adelaide's next year first and got picked 19 in this draft and took Liam Stocker. Um, Aside from thinking Liam Stocker is really good, I think he's underrated in that draft. Personally, I thought he should have gone closer to the top dozen. But the argument for it I like is that they're getting the kids in now and they don't want to waste another year yeah, finishing last, waiting, yeah. waiting to get that kid in and develop him. They get an extra year of development into someone like Stocker, who's right, worth think, it. From what yeah, and I think character-wise as well, he yep. seems like a great. Character. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Stocker's a really good pick. I want. I almost think maybe did they wait till eighteen, saw he was available, and then decided to pull the trigger on the deal. I suspect uh, probably, that's probably yeah. what happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I like this thing. They probably had deals teed up with like teams like Adelaide, who had multiple firsts, who might. Yep. Look to the future and go, we've already got two good kids through the door. We can make them. This man is making their money sure. now with this live trading. I mean, you've got yeah. to be on the ball and know exactly where. Every, you have to analyse everyone else's lists yeah. and find out what you think they're going to be, where what they sitting. want this year, where they're mm. sitting this year, next year, what picks they have now. And just offering deals there front and centre. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It is crazy. Bloody interesting, though. <laughs> yeah. It really is. The yeah. networking side of things where they mm. need to be chatting to every other list manager. They'd all be keen to chat to each other just to yeah. explore all possibilities at this juncture. Explore possibilities. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> you love making draft. anything I say into an innuendo, don't you? He does. <laughs> all right, so moving on to Colin Wood. Did we talk about Carlton? We did. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we just had a break. What year is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny if, like, yeah. no, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about last year's draft, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so Collingwood. These guys are a pretty boring one to talk about. Sorry, Collingwood fans, but I think everyone knew exactly what was going to happen for them. Uh, Isaac Quainor was bid on pick 13 from GWS, I believe. Um, Will Kelly was a father-son that was matched. I think Adelaide bid on them. So their first two picks were, you know, foregone conclusions just about. And then they took uh, some fella, I can't say his name, but I've seen him play and he's actually really good. Artu Bozanev. Laggy. All from the Oakley Chargers, actually. True. Is that yeah. is a fun fact for you? Yeah. And yeah. he has a relationship with Joffa. That says like Ew. Ew. Don't Ati, know what. Atu. <laughs> That's yeah. his grandson. <laughs> it's his like a. It's like his grand. Um, the kid R two D two. His um. <laughs> his grandma's sister married Joffa or something like that. Yeah, that's a so, so, yeah. pretty strong connection. Yeah. So I wouldn't say he had a relationship with Joffa. That's probably a bit misleading. But yeah. um, you leave Joffa out of this. <laughs> Yeah, Joffa's Joffa probably impacted on his life in a profound manner, thank you. I think Joffa was homeless. Probably. Yeah, Joffa's a legend. Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that sounds accurate. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> what good, a burn. Good to see Adelaide keeping other teams honest, actually, with it. Because they, they bid on a lot of um, father-sons, didn't they? Yeah. Um, did they? To be fair, they've got Kelly's four, brother, four, which four, probably five. adds context to them oh, bidding yeah. on him. They've got Kelly's brother. That'd good be point. The context I of that. forgot about that. True. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That, that's a good point, Busher. Yeah. Um, There's a first for everything. Joycey, did good you point like, by Busher. Do you like Isaac Quainer as a prospect? Um, to be honest, I haven't seen heaps, but what I have seen okay. looks... Yeah, he looks pretty good. Sorry, I didn't mean to stitch you up. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking Thank about, God you asked Joyce We were talking about, about like... academy players in the last podcast, um, yeah. and we were saying how uh, it's a bit a bit lame, a little bit lame that, uh, you know, Collingwood just have access to this guy. Um, and, you know, it's, it's 
like it's not necessarily an unfair advantage that Collingwood have. Like every team has an academy, yeah. but I just don't understand why Isaac Quayner goes to Collingwood. No. Uh, why Jared Cameron goes to West Coast? Mm. It's such like, a um, <laughs> like, and that's why I haven't seen much of him because. What is the point of like looking at all the highlights yeah. of this draft prospect if you know where they're going to go? That's true. Yeah, I, I understand. Agree. I yeah. admit I researched him a little bit less um, because you know it was just a foregone yeah. conclusion. But he looks good. Of... I mean, yeah, everything yeah. you've heard. Yeah, I thought that bid was quite early. Um, Toomey yeah. got it right. Toomey was saying that was about right, but yeah, I think I had him a little bit later. But yeah, uh, but you know that's a slam dunk for slam dunk for Collingwood. They traded in beams. And they're getting academy players that are worth pick 13 and pick 29, but they didn't have those picks. You know, they just matched those bids. So, you know, that's a massive off-season for yeah. them. So. Yeah, they played it well. Mm. Even the Bams try bringing back in those picks in the 40s has probably made all the difference almost. Yeah, yeah that's right. So they haven't really missed out. So next year they'll have no first-rounder, but, yeah. you know, they've virtually got a f- first-rounder for free this year with... Yeah. Um, with uh, Quainor. Quainor, thank you. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Um, Essendon's the next team another team that didn't have good picks as such so there's not too much analysis to do they have kind of ignored the draft for the last couple of years I think because when they were you know struggling they got in a lot of young players like McGrath and Francis Parrish and Parrish and Laverty and Langford to a lesser extent so, France. oh yeah you said Francis my bad yeah, <laughs> yeah. so they had some good picks for years and they've traded in Shiel Stringer um, Saad and Smith over the last couple of years, so going the established route. But I guess the big story out of this one was them bidding on Hawthorne's Irving Mosquito Academy prospect and then stealing him. Yeah. Did you see the footage of Dottero, Adrian Dottero, when no. they? Uh, it's it's just mildly amusing, but um, like they bid on Mosquito and then. Like, it cuts to him and he goes, we got him. <laughs> you can lip read and he just uh, like, really? Yeah, it's pretty funny <laughs> footage. <laughs> I wonder how um, the bloke feels like trained. Does, like, through the academy, he trains with that team. I presume so. I think Cameron years. traded with West Coast. So. Yeah, true, of course. Um, so training with the team for a year and it's kind of guaranteed up till that mm. up to that date that, you know, Hawthorne's got to take you. And then <laughs> another team just jumps in and all of a sudden you're going with... I don't know, you've trained with a team and met everyone there, you know all the people there, you know all the players, you probably expect to go there, and then Essendon buddy comes in and yeah. just asking instead. I guess with it. like I guess with this sort of thing, I'm sure the club were making no promises because yeah. because of the draft position they had that I think Hawthorne's first pick was fifty three and then like ninety nine or something after that. Did they still have fifty three? I thought that's what they flipped. Oh wait, they got that. They got Kashitsky, okay. which will lead to um, I swore they'd flip fifty three in that Scully trade. I no, they, I think they sent a future fourth for Scully, oh. which is even more disgusting. Yeah, because I swore it was 53 <laughs> for some reason. I had 53 in my head being a part of that trade. No, nah, I'm pretty sure they kept 53. Yeah. They used He's out. still going to be much better off Mosquito having had a year training with an AFL club, so mm. he can see what's required to be a professional footballer and yeah. get used to it. He can AFL take the lessons Mosquito. he learned at a good club and take them to Essendon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rough. Yeah, they're not that bad. <laughs> yeah, I was joking. Essendon's probably a better shot at the flag than Hawks this year, I'd say. Sting. Early days, but Ooh, we'll make that call. I don't know. I don't know. I I listening, to a, listening to a bunch of football podcasts, they talk like with players, they talk about how well equipped, like under 18s, so like people that drafted, <laughs> how well equipped. I like, saw Jesse how... making an innuendo out of that the second you said it. <laughs> Well equipped. I, I can see his mind. Well tools, you know? yeah. <laughs> I can see his brain just clicking over, going, "Yeah, this is Jack Crisp." Make. Actually, yeah, yeah, I've seen a couple of his a few bit of footage of him recently. Yeah, no, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Which vague idea? I mean. <laughs> no, like they're coming. Like nowadays, through Tat Cup and that kind of thing, these blokes are just so you know always ready to go. Like next year. <laughs> All right, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> They're primed in the peak yeah, of their lives. Yeah. So, what is your point? Sorry, I'm just. I know it's again. like you're you talking about that... how like you got the academies and training with the AFL clubs. Yeah. It's fantastic, but yeah. I don't think there's like the difference between a uh, player. Uh, there's somewhat of a difference, but I don't think it's a vast <laughs> difference compared to players that uh, only play tack cup and things like okay. that. Okay, so the, the, you're I think the development the... through those youth pathways is like really getting these players AFL ready mm. to just step up the next year. Even school Basically. footy over there, which I think is a lot bigger over East than it is here, yeah, for example. Is. Yeah. yeah, I think they might be moving that way here. You know, they've kind of tried to revolutionise the uh, the waffle cult system, taking away from the clubs and stuff like that. I think we're going to see yeah. changes mm-hmm. in the future. Um, 
And I know that over the East they undertake weight training for their academy kids and like um, state team kids and stuff like that at about 16 or right. even younger. And at WA notoriously, not notoriously, but um, you know, uh, well known for doing that a bit later. So yeah. in general, they're skinnier and maybe need a bit more physical development when they get drafted. It's just a little thing. Is that is, is the Colts team uh, for the waffle? Like, did they get paid per? Player no. drafted? Is that, oh, yeah, they, yeah. That's what they're trying to turn into like a feeder kind of thing mm. for, I don't know, basically for the AFL. Yes, I think the um, the junior club that produced them as well gets something. Yeah, that's true. Gets yeah. some sort of donation. Um, yeah. That's how it works in bloody soccer as well, isn't it? Like junior clubs, I remember um, yeah. De Maria going to PSG and his junior, junior club that was tiny just ended up with a couple hundred thousand dollars or a couple wow. million or something like that. Yeah, it's great though. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. you obviously want some of that. It's good for the Perth Demons. I'm a big Perth Demons fan here in WA and we had a couple of Ian Hill and Luke English get drafted right. and Sydney's tack missed out. But, um, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Luke Perth English was at Perth? Wasn't his brother at South? Because he's relate. Is he related to Tim? I, he's not his brother. Oh, I swear they were related. Mm, I don't know if they're related, but they're not, they're brother, not brothers, yeah. There was an English related to Tim in... Was it this year's draft or? I don't know. Yeah. I swear there's someone related to Tim. I mean, they're both called English. Yeah, was he in the draft though? Tim English? <laughs> yeah. He's related to a Tim. <laughs> um, there was somebody related to Tim English. Yeah. Even I, if he wasn't in the draft. They're not brothers. I'm pretty confident yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, all right, boys. We can probably skip over Fremantle. Yeah, sounds good, cool, Matt. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, okay, what were your thoughts? What, what were your hopes and dreams for this draft? What kind of players did you want? Don't know. I, I, was pr- I think I wanted a midfielder, actually. Oh, did you? Um, yeah, going into it. I wanted uh, someone like a stocker. Um, yep. But I'm happy to bow down and... Uh, <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Continue, mate. <laughs> yeah, stop myself. No, I'm ha- pretty happy we got Sam Sturt. Uh, pretty raw talent by the sounds of it. Um, and I'm kind of glad, though, that we backed that up with Valente, who's more of a safe mid with the next pick. So I think they kind of balance each other out nicely. So I really wanted Valente, Valente for the um, Eagles' first pick on day two. I yeah. thought he was such an Eagles-style pick, just like the... Um, yeah, he is. Not super athletic, but just smart decision-maker, good skills, um, leadership, under-18 captain mm. um, for South Australia as well, who were the best team this year. Um, so I think he could be a little bit of a steal. I wonder if clubs overlooked him because he's a, like, no disrespect to him, but maybe he's a bit of a vanilla, boring prospect. But, you know, sometimes those are the best players in the draft. I think back to Dom Sheed when, you know, he was probably one of the most overlooked players. And I think they're kind of similar players. Because Sheed was a Lark medalist, wasn't he? He was, yeah. to be fair. Yes, he did. So he, yeah. he was probably the better performed player compared yeah. to Valenti. But Valenti, in terms of style. Was he yeah. MVP for the champions? He was South Australian. That's more what I meant, but Sheed was a black medalist and he wasn't as highly considered. Right. That's more where I was getting at rather than shitting on him. Yeah, right. No, no. I can understand why (laughs) you leaped to that conclusion considering he plays for the Eagles, but... Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, so what I'm saying is I think Valenti was a bit underrated. Um, 32 seems like a bit of a bargain. What were your thoughts, Bushel? I was happy with Valente because it was a name I'd actually heard because I pretty much (laughs) knew the first round and local guys sort of thing for this year's draft. True. Exams were riding me and whatnot, but yeah, yeah, when I heard Valente in the second, I was like, "It was good, wasn't he?" And I was pretty happy. Champion Data had him ranked tenth. Yeah, yeah, tenth performing player in the champs or whatever. If you take, if you had taken him at seventeen, I would have thought, "Yeah, that's yeah. a decent pick." Yeah. <laughs> so it's for the fact that he was thirty-two, yeah. I think Freeman I, I did. Up, didn't they, as well? I did really want Stocker at that seventeen, but Sturt I really like the look of as well, so I can accept that. Yeah, that's like one, but you can go. Mm. Yeah, I can see why he did that. Yeah, yeah. I think Freeman will probably do need. Some forwards as well. Um, yeah. You know, obviously drafting midfield heavy last year, you took Chera Brayshaw, uh, Croden, Banfield, and yeah. Tom North. Yeah. Um, Giro, if you consider him a midfielder. So, um, so yeah, you probably did need a, like a talented mid forward. Yeah. And we got Schultz as well, who's a half forward. Yep. Um, yeah, so another forward there. And Bewley, a midfielder. Bewley, yeah, a wingman, a bit of a... Almost seems like a looks a little bit like a Shannon Hearn type of <laughs> player. He's got a really big kick as well. Um, that was a tight training off. kick, which <laughs> is probably even more useful with the new <laughs> kick out rules. Even though they didn't end up moving the square, like a better kick from the back square is probably more valued now that you can run out and roast it further yeah. down the field. True. Yeah. True. So they'd probably be drafting for those sort of skills a bit more. 
with these rule changes. Quite a uh, clear, mature age view this year, Fremantle, not just in the draft. Obviously, um, lost Lockie Neal, but traded in four established players. You got Hogan, Lobb, obviously, as the key forwards, but Collier and Conkle were a clear part of a strategy to get more experience in. And now in the later parts of the draft, going for a 20-year-old and a 23-year-old, I think it's it's um, it's probably gotten to the point for Fremantle where you're almost starting to feel like the talent's in the door. And it's just yeah. about developing it and getting, you know, enough players around them to nurture that. And, mm. you know, Trevor and Brayshaw yeah. will probably play, like, just about every game they're fit for. But, um, yeah. you know. Blakely will be back in the guards. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't think you've said that on a podcast <laughs> yet. Yeah. So I think I've, I've said it many second. times. I've been entirely honest. But I just love Blakely and felt the need to re-emphasize that fact. <laughs> yeah. In the guards. So who takes his spot in the back line? Griffin Logue. Yeah, Logue's probably Dread. the front runner. He's having a very big pre-season, apparently. Mm. As big uh, as his quads? He's yeah, he's an absolute unit, isn't he? Yeah, he's a staunch man. Yeah. Um, so he definitely seems like. Although we've still got um, Nye House. Yeah. And Taylor Dooman actually had a pretty good. Taylor Dooman. I love <laughs> saying that. Sorry. Pretty good <laughs> first <laughs> season. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I think it's, and Stephen Hill runs down yeah. half. He'll back probably as well. go more back. Probably. So that's probably the one area we actually have quite a bit of depth in. Yeah. yeah. True. Our back line's pretty sweet at this point, I'd say. It's probably one of the few things we've got going for us. Yeah, not much else. Hopefully the forward line with yeah. Hogan and Lobb here now. We, we can get there. I'm no, pretty happy with the way we're trucking, I guess, on the yeah. whole. Yeah. No, pretty pretty happy. Yeah. Not a real thing. Not a real expression. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on trucking. Uh, cool, boys. Um, all right, well, the Cats enter the draft at pick 15, and the Steel... In Jordan Clark. <laughs> Stephen Wells, you've done it again, you might say, Bush. Eh? That's a bit of a stretch. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just because someone's fallen into your lap doesn't mean you're a draft wizard. Like, yeah, you didn't but... do anything to have Jordan Clark fall in his lap other than other teams go different directions. Yeah, we were saying that um, just before we started recording. Where we were, uh, it, There's nothing against Stephen Wells, but I, I laughed at the media sort of reaction. Like, Stephen Wells has pulled a gem. He just picked us Yeah, and they're like just making like, it out like he's recurrently repeatedly drafts really well but mm. who's the last really good early draft pick you can think of that Geelong's taken Cockatoo hasn't done that much Darcy Lang's at Carlton now mm. and I can't think of any other so, early picks I, I think they've traded out a bunch to get like yeah they've traded a few to be um, fair <sighs> yeah no it's been a while since they really drafted well they've kind of traded in a lot of their established players now yeah. they'd used a few to get Dangerfield mm. they spoke they're hanging on yeah. Menzel was probably a good pick on talent. Yeah. That was like nine, though. Yeah. It's gone now. Um, they're hanging on to, like, a finals chance. Yeah. And I don't know. I just get the feeling they, they could be made to pay for it with this lack of young talent they've at some point. They've got some young talent to their credit. Yeah, they do. Like, but not probably, like, those early blue chip But I don't think they've got as much young talent as a lot of other clubs. Yeah. Um, the one that they've obviously got going for them is that they're a destination club, so they could potentially always just be flipping picks for established good players. I think it was them and Freo who had the most games into debutants last year or something. Eagles were up there as well, weren't they? Eagles had most debutants or equal yeah. most debutants, but not games. Exactly. Yeah. Like we had a lot games of played, then. I think it was Geelong or Freo that had the most games played by their debutants. Freo, Freo had... Freo had the most. Freo had twice as much as Geelong, who was yeah. second. Okay, right. Geelong was second, yeah. 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 Geelong had Fogarty and Kelly... Obviously and play what's, the what's the other guy? I can't remember his name. Uh, the, Parfitt's one, but he wasn't yeah, a debutant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Rad- Radical Louis. Yeah, Radical Louis, that's one. Cons- was he was Constable he a first year? as well? Yeah, I don't think he, he debuted. He debuted, I think. No, I don't know if he was a first year, but he debuted. He was first year. I don't, I didn't, he's definitely first year. I don't remember him playing. He played a bit. Okay. I remember seeing him in a My few mistake. games. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm actually going to go the other way. I reckon the Cats are going to surprise a few next year and be up right up there. Finished second two years ago. Uh, well, actually, one year ago. Uh, and, ju- yeah, they finished second on the ladder. Um, I think people have easily, quickly forgotten um, and are quick to write off a team that's a bit older. But, you know, that's a, people did that with West Coast. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, the pa- talent that Geelong still have um, and adding, like, a good utility now, Jordan Clark. Um, I think. What do you think, Louis? Oh, he's halfback flanker, isn't he? I think there was a bit yeah. of a debate about um, picking halfback flanker that early, I guess, because he's played predominantly in the back line. That's Correct. Like often, yeah. 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 So I think there was a bit of division from Geelong sports. For my reading, anyway, they were a bit 
don't know. I guess it's it's hard because you're drafting halfback flankers with, I guess, the assumption that they'll move into the midfield. And again, as West Coast know, that doesn't always doesn't actually always happen. <laughs> as West Coast know. As West Coast know, yeah. yeah. And we haven't done it, you know, like very often, but players like Liam Duggan and things like that, that we assume would have midfield aspirations have stayed in the half. Yeah, mm. stay in the back line. So, yeah. I, uh, I think they do need, they did need rather, um, like a defender though. I think they've got a bit of midfield talent. I think they just probably need to spread it around the ground a little bit, but. They've got still got some good defenders, but yeah, they're probably a few on the last legs. Like, hmm. did Lonigan retire or is he gone another year? I think he retired, didn't he? Don't know. I think so. I don't know. I yeah. can't remember. Yeah, don't ask questions like that on the med podcast. And we can't answer. <laughs> 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 yeah. I can't remember. We're exploring. We're speculating. Yeah, I've got exactly. a feeling he did. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's why I'd choose if I had to pick one of those two options. All right, boys, moving on to the Suns, another very active team with picks 2, 3, 6, and 23. Gone with the South Australian flavouring. <laughs> Lukosius and Rankin at pick 2 and 3. On talent, you'd have to say. Quick reaction, I really like their draft. Um, just putting all, sort of the cultural things aside at Gold Coast, um, I think they've taken four really good players with their picks. Hmm. Do you think with their top four picks anyway? I love I love McLennan. I, actually, I agree. I, I really like all of those players in isolation. Do you think it was a bit risky picking Ben Ben King rather um, when his brother's a Saints fan? No, so they're both Saints fans, and yeah. then he's gone to St Kilda. They've got every reason to go home. It probably is a bit of a risk, but I like the fact that they said no. We're going to stick to our guns and pick who we think the best player is anyway. Yeah, and just back ourselves to keep him. I, think, I actually agree with that. Yeah. Apparently they talked to him as well and sold him a bit more on the idea of being a potential star on the team, which yeah. is another reason if why you, they ended up taking him. If you just end up only taking players you think will want to stay in Queensland, at the, the end of the day, they're just going to be sacrificing too much talent. Mm. Uh-huh. True. Um, because, so they just need to bat themselves in to build the culture and keep those players. They also are only going to in, uh, retain their players if they're going to start winning as well. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Like, you can't... You can't just pick players on character, and then if you don't improve, like you're gonna have the same problem anyway. So um, I've gone on and on about Rankin. I think he's an absolute gun. Um, was also hearing on the radio that apparently he entered like the Golden Gift in Adelaide, which is a sprinting race. Right. And I'm not sure if it was Division One or what, but he won right. as well. So the dude's got serious pace to burn. Apparently yeah. can squeeze through a gap that's only. <laughs> Centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's Joyce is so I've heard. Innuendo. With his whole body. He's, he's well, well equipped, is how you'd, you'd say. <laughs> uh, I think St. Kilda, Kilda made a jibe or something on Twitter, didn't they? Against they did. Against the Coast? They yeah. Were, they said, Kilda. hey, Ben, uh, or something along the lines of, like, if you ever want to come home, Ben. And it had a photo of um, him and Max King, like, in their mm-hmm. jumpers. And Gold Coast got pissed off. And said I'd Kilda love for Max King too. to go to Gold Coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what are the chances of that? Fantastic. I'm yeah. still a bit worried. There's a chance at least at least two thirds of those top six picks that they had are gone within four. I think years. it comes down to them improving. I think if Brisbane have improved, and I think they're going to be okay in terms of retention. Mm. But it's the same thing. If you're in a constant rebuild, you're not going to keep players. Mm. I don't. I don't really think it's. I don't think there's anything wrong with the city of Brisbane. I don't think it's that. Gold Coast, mate. Gold no, Coast. Uh, sorry, no, I meant, no. I meant, yeah, Region. Brisbane and Gold Coast. It's definitely not that. Well, a lot of people criticise them, saying like, "Why would you start a team in, in Queensland because you can't keep players there?" But I'm just saying, I think it's because they're rebuilding, personally. Mm. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, I still think if they stuff this up, they're going the Tassie or something will happen to them. Drastic. They took they, they took three South Australian players. Didn't yeah, they? Do you think that was a particular like that's saying they chose for a reason as in do you think that made a big difference in their drafting strategy to take say It'd be three South Australians like does that make yeah I think it influenced them taking McLennan I think Lakotius and Rankin were the second three and third standard. best players yeah, so yeah. but McLennan when they traded up with West Coast to get 23 that was a obvious tactic uh, yeah I'd say that was partially tactical but I also think McLennan's a really good prospect probably around that range as well mm-hmm. so um, I thought they were going for Valenti and another South Australians but yeah. Yeah, evidently not um, moving on to the other expansion team, boys. GWS going very midfield heavy with their first three picks. They got Caldwell, Haitley, and O'Halloran, and then um, WA Speedster, Ian Hill. Interesting. 
a lot of talent there, but it's yeah. just it's kind of like the product of them just losing players. Good draft yeah. for them as well, I think. That's yeah. a good draft. They'd be very happy to get Caldwell at 11. Yeah. Um, I think they'd be pretty happy to get Ian Hill at 24 as well, personally. Yeah. Well, they did trade up to specifically get him. Yeah. Because they felt... I read an article that think they were really interested in his X Factor and speed because that's something they felt they've never really had is a mm. forward with that speed and X Factor. Yeah. They like, reached... Toby Green's a small forward, but he's got a different type of X Factor mm. to yeah. an Ian Hill sort of player. True. They did reach earlier a few years ago to get Jared Pickett at pick four. Yeah. Um, so I, that I think they, work, they, yeah. they do kind of look for that sort of X Factor player. That's true. That worked out so well, he's at Carlton. <laughs> yeah, Ian Hill's going to end up there anyway. Yeah, I think Ian Hill will end up back in WA at some point. Free man, I'm sure. Yeah. All right, now back to the Hawks, who, uh, again, kind of had a boring present. What? So enthusiastic. Uh, yeah, now back to the Hawks. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, I guess they didn't have that interesting a draft because yeah. they've gone for the old uh, Kashitsky. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Justin? <laughs> no, nah, his cousin, Jacob. Justin? Oh, okay. It's his cousin, is it? It is actually his oh, cousin. Cool. Yeah, much younger cousin, I guess. But, um, yeah, Jacob Krasinski, he's a uh, centre-half back, which I think they kind of needed. And they probably wanted a key forward, ideally. Um, Noah Gown was available, and they didn't choose him, interestingly. I thought that was going to be who they would pick. Uh, but they've gone Krasinski, and that's, yeah, maybe... Every time I think of Krasinski, I just think of the time he fainted on television. Oh, yeah, that's horrible. Yeah. It was like from a concussion, wasn't it? And David Schwartz was standing right there and like, yeah. He was a strange cat. Trying to, to, strange trying to cat hold him up. Wasn't that yeah, too, are good. you confusing two different times he was like concussed? Yeah. Then, like, I think on TV. Like, yeah, were you talking about one where he's walking off the field? No, he's having oh. an interview. There was another one. He just collapses. Yeah, yeah that, I've seen that one. There's another one I think, I swear it's him where he's um, like walking yeah. off the field and he's okay. like talking absolute shit. And they're like, no, that's still in Robertson. Yeah, I, I've seen that one as well. I, no, I feel like there's two yeah, Kaczynski yeah, ones, right? I agree. Yep. Okay. Oh, but yes, the Robertson is also a real one. Yes, Chris that's Chris also a real Chris. one. <laughs> um, yeah, and so, yeah, the Hawks added Matthew Walker uh, through GWS's academy, actually. He's a forward from New South Wales. Okay. But, you know, like the Hawks obviously are not paying too much attention to the draft these days and they go on the trading yeah. in their team. And Can it, you, um, like, I haven't heard much about Matthew Walker Bush. Can you, like, allude to what sort of player... He is. I'm just going to stare blankly at you entirely. Truthful. I was going to, I was going to stitch him up. We're going to Carton, pick sixty six, Finbar O'Dwyer. I, was gonna, I, was, I, was I probably could have said a little bit more about that because I was with my friend yesterday, who's a Carton fan. Who oh really? Briefly. Oh man, that would have been good. I actually. still would have known nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you have said anything? <laughs> oh, my mate's a Carton fan. <laughs> That's pretty much what I would have said. I would, yeah, my mate mentioned him. That's what I know about yeah, Finbar. Yeah, no, I know Walker. He's <laughs> love like, his name. I'd, first, I second time I've heard it, but I love the name. Well, yeah, yeah. He's oh, he's, he's technically this is a midfielder here. I had him okay. forward in my in my um, database. One eighty eight, eighty four. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But um, you keep a database on the under 18s Jesse. Yeah. What? What of it? Database. <laughs> Just their dimensions. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, shut no, up. Really they are. Uh, Melbourne. <laughs> Moving on to Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. Melbourne, I have to admit, took a bunch of players I hadn't heard of other than Tom Sparrow. I think I talked about him in the last podcast as being my diamond in the rough. He okay. actually ended up going 27, which is fairly early. I wasn't even available for the Eagles' first pick, but he's kind of like a, almost like a shoey style um, inside mid, hence the love. And um, Captain Tom Sparrow. Oh, you made that joke last time as well. <laughs> did I actually? <laughs> I can't even remember. Yeah, yeah. 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 and I didn't, I didn't laugh. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> um, but no, I think he's actually a really good player um, in terms of best available um, South yep. Australian boy. And then, yeah, look, James Jordan. I don't know who he or Aaron Nietzsche are. Uh, Marty Hoare. I'm sorry, Melbourne. Fan. Marty Hoare is kind of a funny name, but... Um, <laughs> 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 He's a mature That's all the analysis player. we have. Yeah. <laughs> That's this a funny looking name. Mighty Hall, so Gary Lyon retired years ago. <laughs> this <laughs> is the most <laughs> unprofessional podcast. Oh, look, shut up. I've been back for this. Oh, <laughs> I know who Tom Sparrow is. I don't know who James Jordan is. I, re- I reckon he's a bolter. He's a, I know he's 17 still. <laughs> no stats on him. Yeah, see, see just there you dimensions. go. Just dimensions. Yeah. That's weird. I'd, I'd say that's just What's the under 18 chance he didn't play. <laughs> Some database. Yeah. Um, but for Melbourne's needs, you know, they probably didn't need a midfielder as such. Probably I thought they were. I thought they were going to really need midfielder. it anywhere. Like they're pretty sorted everywhere. I thought they were going to get Gown as well to um, 
as because he's like a key forward to replace. Yeah, Hogan, I was going to say could have done, could have done with a key forward, yeah. mm. but do be like that sometimes. They've still got Wiedemann, who's like what twenty one. Yeah. I still can't. And I don't know what they're planning with Proust, if whether they're planning in playing some forward or. You'd think not to play. Wasn't well, he <laughs> thing? Yeah. Well, apparently they're planning <laughs> both of them. <laughs> apparently they're play. planning to try and play both of them. That's how they. Proust is such a like. Go on and he's just a wrecking ball, isn't he? Apparently they've sold Proust on the idea of playing both of them, I think, to an wow. extent. Both of them nuts. Be interested to see how that works out, because yeah. where can Proust play when he's not yeah, that's uh, right. uh, rucking? I think it was something about Proust wanted to come play for them because he wanted to be an understudy to Gorn, because he's about the best yeah. ruck in the world. But, I mean, Proust is not that young, so he yeah. hasn't got that And much Proust time. left North Melbourne because he couldn't get past Goldstein. Yeah. He thought he was with... It, it, yeah. He could quite easily get a game at some clubs. Yeah. If he Saint went to Kilda. West Coast, West Coast would be yeah. a good chance to get a game. St Kilda would definitely get a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, that's an odd one. I don't understand it. Um, weird. Yeah, weird. Um, speaking of North Melbourne, another team that kind of went in without picks. Can you kill your dog? Shut <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm not joking. <laughs> um, so he's tried it off. We're good. Yeah. What a cute act, mate. He's cute. <laughs> oh, there's another one for you to beep out, my bad. Thank you. <laughs> segment. Um, <laughs> North Melbourne. Uh, another team, as I said, so it traded out the picks to get Pollock um, and amongst others. Taron Thomas has fallen into their lap as a Tasmanian academy player. God knows why. They play games in down in Tasmania, therefore they have an academy. I don't understand. He is a good player. Um, Very good player. Yeah, one of two Tassie boys to go in the top ten. Why wasn't Chase Jones in their academy as well if he was a Tassie boy? Uh, no, he's not just any Tasmanian player. There's obviously yeah. some division like yeah. down there, but yeah, it would be a bit weird if it was every Tassie player. Yeah. I think um, he lived in Melbourne until he was 15. Yeah. Uh, Sydney, I think. Was it Sydney? He's a Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, he grew up playing yeah. rugby. Yes, yeah, correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure, but... But whatever, they've got him. <laughs> He's a good prospect. Good prospect. I think he'll play, be able to play in his first season. Yeah, he looks um, really good, Taron Thomas. Yeah, good sort of outside sort of forward player as well, which they could probably use. Um, that name is such so Tasmania, hey, Taron. Like, it's just not... I, I know a few Tarons, actually. It's just not a good name. I don't know. It's just hard, <laughs> so hard Tasmanian, name. isn't it? <laughs> Taron. Taron. Hey, Taron. Taza. Uh, I don't think he'll play... Oh. Um, straight up, joke. personally. Mm. I think they're pretty actually suited with their midfield at the moment. I think he's... Yeah. I mean, he can play as a medium forward. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they've also got Davies Uniac, mm. um, Simpkin, a couple of these other young guys to get in there. Um, oh, Simpkin, well, yeah, Simpkin's definitely going to be playing. But uh, I can see him doing better earlier than LDU because he's just got an outside game, whereas LDU looked a bit lost. Um, it's probably going to have to be a bit of a slow burn development wise, I think, yeah. and eventually become an inside mid. Be interesting Thomas. to see what happens with LDU because he's not disappointing. He's only played one season, but he definitely didn't light the world on fire. Yeah, I think, uh, like I said, it's I, if you don't have much that much of an outside game, then it's hard to shine early. That's why Stevenson mm-hmm. is by far and away the best prospect. Higgins yeah. as well; they have strong outside game. Stevenson um, was in a very like Fortuitous his team situation. just suited yeah. him per- mm. perfectly as well. He can play a niche role, so could Higgins, like as yeah. forwards. Uh, whereas LDU can't play a niche role really. He's kind yeah. of like an on baller. And that's one of the reasons I kind of um, also gave a lot of credit to Warpel, who plays yeah. inside the guts, lots True. of clearances and hard ball gets in a Hawks midfield. Yeah, and even someone like Brayshaw is like the same. He's he's a midfielder. Yeah, and but he was still better than LDU. But yeah, early days, early days. Yeah. Uh, and Curly's Taylor was a bit of a steal for North, sliding yeah. all the way to 46. Some thought he was, you know, mid-20s talent. Um, no, that'd, they'd be very happy with getting him at 46, I think. Yeah, in terms of best available. And then two father sons for Bailey Scott and Joel Crocker. So, yeah, yeah three of the four players they knew were coming to them, probably. So, um, They've done well, I think. Yep. Definitely. Port is another interesting team here for having three picks in the top, uh, what turned out to be 18, but it was originally 15. And traded aggressively for those picks, traded out Wingard, then they traded out uh, Polek. Polek, yep, and they Jasper Pittard was another way. So a bit of an exodus, and they're trying to obviously just refresh their list a little bit with talent. Um, Connor Rosie, kind of like a Wingard replacement almost, in terms of style, in terms of that forward mid, goal-kicking midfielder. Adelaide Boyer. He is, that's true. Um, but then they picked two Victorians in Butters and Dersma. And the, uh-huh. all three of these players have uh, things in common. They're like fast, outside, skillful players. Yeah. Um, that 
you know, could all potentially hope to be in the mid- play midfield, but might end up somewhere else. I think they and they lost Polek as well, so a lot of uh, yeah. lost a lot of outside runs. So. And Wingard. Yeah, so, obviously, uh, yeah. they're sort of a direct reaction to that. Mm. And I think they're pretty sorted with, in terms yeah. of just inside balls. mids with Power Pepper and um, yeah. Wines. Rockcliffe. Mm. Rockcliffe, yeah. But yeah, even outside, they've lost Jarman Impey last season. True. They've yeah. lost a lot of those outside they've, runners. They've gone without... They've almost had almost gone a little bit stale. Um, we yeah. saw that they had a really good season around like 2014, 2015. Um, didn't quite do anything and the list has had kind of stalled since then. So, um, a bit like West Coast. I keep bringing it back to West Coast. Well, West Coast won the Premiership. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like in the between fifteen and eighteen, they had a stalling period where people thought, "Oh, they're old, yeah. they're stagnant." And I think it's although I think West Coast was still better. Personally. Oh, I say hindsight though. But to be fair, you have always said that you did say at the start of the year Eagles were much better than Port. I remember you saying that. And so yeah, Port point. didn't even make a grand final. Even yeah, no, no, that's true. Even they did get close, when they're at though. their best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I also picked up Riley Grundy, brother of Brody, uh, oh, cool. as a key back prospect, South Australian, to potentially lure Brody home. Probably not. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I'd say. No, yeah, no, that's you wouldn't stretch. think so. No. How small is my chair? Am I really sitting there? Oh, I think yours is the stuffed one, but just falls back oh. down eventually. Oh, that's why. Because I swear so... I said it. I fit in the midget in this episode. Okay, that's cool. It's cool. Yeah. I'll juggle you later. <laughs> <laughs> For a free ticket. For some tickets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but overall, are we happy with Port's picks? Did you think Rosie was best available? Probably. No. I didn't personally. Think I was leading you that question because yeah. I knew you didn't think that. Interesting. Um, who do you think they should have taken to put you on the spot there? Off the top of your head. Let's see look who was around. Oops. Ben uh, King, but... Bailey Smith. I think, yeah. Caldwell. Ben King would have been a good Ben pick. King, yeah. I think Bailey Smith. I think Caldwell. I think Smith was the one who told clubs that he had um, like mental health issues and wouldn't play out interstate, which I think... Would have had a um, would have had a bid on Taron Thomas, possibly. You'd bid on Taron Thomas over Rosie, taking Rosie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I, don't, I think, sure. personally, I, I'm not as solid on Rosie as everyone else, I think. He kind of had the luxury of sort of being a receiving mid when he had um, a really good ball winner in Valente, then had Isaac Rankin and Lacosius to kick it to. Um, I don't know. I could be proven wrong. Let's hope I am proven wrong. I've got nothing against the kid. Imagine but... what you can do with established <laughs> AFL talent if that's the position you're taking, though, to be fair. Yeah, but Port Adelaide aren't to the AFL aren't what South Australia was to... Yeah. The champs this year. They've still got some talent. Yeah, they got Charlie some talent. Charlie Dixon's a handy guy to kick too. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that they're a terrible team by any stretch. And I'm not having a go at the kid. I just what think you got against better him, kicks Joyce, What have you got against him, mate? Yeah. <laughs> What's the drama with him? And Port. No, I, I get what Joyce is saying, yeah. But uh, like, I think he's... Um, yeah, I think he's going to be like the receiving kind of player who, who does well when the team is doing well. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. As long as he's yeah, damaging. He's, he's got a lot of good attributes, so... You um, can't like all can't like all the picks. Yeah, yeah, true. Otherwise, we're not doing our job. <laughs> Get off his back. Yeah, oh. geez, man. I was just trying to make him substantiate. <laughs> no, no, that's, nah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, moving on to the Tigers' premiership team from last year, have now taken Riley Collier Dawkins with their first pick, and uh, he was one that you kind of like. Is that right? Yeah, I did kind of like it. But he's definitely a raw potential sort rather mm. than the immediate impact kind of guy. I think he put on like 10 centimetres in the last year or two in height. So yeah, in own height. Right. Oh, oh no, pants. I meant in penis size. Um, <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> oh, jeez. That's just, oh. We're having a good time here. Yeah, yeah. Just trying, just really and, um, yeah, so I guess they've got a bit of a luxury to do that, though, when uh, there they've got so much talent. <laughs> oh, I've ruined it for those kids, <laughs> have I? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Are we talking about the are we talking about the podcast still? Or are we yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh Jesus. Uh, but they've got four mids, which is interesting. I think they do need to they did need to replenish their midfield stocks. But uh four mids is quite quite intensive. And another Tassie boy, Fraser Turner. Maybe he's the third Tassie boy. Yeah. Was it you that said there's three Tassie boys drafted? Three. Okay, yeah, so he must have been the third one. Looking at their lists, I would have thought maybe they would have gone for a half-back or something. Bashar Hooley getting a bit old. 
a lot of people not quite sold on Nathan Broad. Mm. Um, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Comes but, um, out of best of like, who's yeah, available, but that's, that's it. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Premiership medal holding Nathan Broad. It is, yeah. <laughs> Not that he's always held the medal. There's been other yeah, yeah. people wearing his medal. <laughs> Just a throw you some dirt in an old wound. Yeah. 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 Gross. <laughs> Is that what you call it? Throw <laughs> <laughs> some dirt. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it's worse when you guys don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it funny. After the like, 15th uh, time and uh, half an hour. Throw <laughs> some dirt in an old wound. <laughs> Thank you. As if you suddenly like, I swear, like half the times you're really silly, and then the other times I make a silly joke, and he's like, "What are you talking about? We're doing a podcast." <laughs> <laughs> it's the dynamic, Jesse. Yeah. You know these things. Like, you saw that comment Fred I sent the other day. Where in our early days of our friendship. Oh yeah, yeah. no, let's not bring that up. Yeah, I was gonna say some of the. <laughs> That was a horrible comment. What happens on Bandcamp stays in Bandcamp. <laughs> <laughs> on Bandcamp. <laughs> Website. Um, yeah. Moving on to the Saints. I just realised I haven't checked my phone to see if anyone on Discord asked a question. But uh, moving on to the Saints, we obviously had pick four. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, we had a ton of questions that we haven't answered. That's all right. We can still go through a few. Um, we can just sing okay, kind of, afterwards. We can just yeah, replace right, the right, 20 minutes. We're going to talk yeah. about West Coast and answer right, the people's yeah, questions. Let's just keep going. Um, all right. Max King, Bytel and Matthew Parker were the first Saints' first three picks. First of all, Max King, um, happy with that pick from a Saints perspective? Yeah. 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 I guess so. Yeah. Not sold on McCartan. That works for I them. I would have thought they maybe needed a mid. That's but true. But if they're going for talent, then... I you can't so. really argue against Max King. I think they were talked about trading down and then getting Bailey Smith um, on the basis that they thought, you know, yeah. an interstate club wouldn't take Bailey Smith. I think a right. lot of people would have thought maybe Bailey Smith was um, definitely a stretch at four. That's probably one of the reasons they went with Max King as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously you got a chance to get Ben in a couple of years, as much we joke about it. That's yeah. probably a real thing. Yeah. Uh, and Bytel was a, I think a top 10 prospect at the start of the year or something like that and had back injuries. So he's kind of um, dropped down the, the rankings a little bit, but uh, a talented player nonetheless. And then they've gone for three mature ages. So same as Fremantle, probably got to the point where they're like, you look, we've got the kids we want. Um, it's time to start improving and moving up the ladder with Matthew Parker from South Fremantle and Nick Hind, the speed stuff from Essendon. So... Sounds um, good. Yeah, I think they did pretty well. Uh, you know, with pick four, it's hard to go to wrong. Mm. Actually, that's not true. Not too many teams have gone wrong. Um, Sydney Swans had a bit of a slam dunk with Nick Blakey. Yeah, another yeah, very lucky there. Inexplicable academy player who's father, son for North, but... Arguably a top five if he's not an academy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Depends on who needs a key forward in the top five, but because uh, I guess he was here when he had, like, King and Lukosius... Yeah, ahead but I mean, up. he I can play as a saying. midfielder, Blakey, as well. Yeah, yeah, he's a big big midfielder. Um, but yeah, that's true, that's true. So a bit of a buddy, like a parent, heir apparent, I mean. And James Rowbottom, BT's nephew, got re- recruited at pick 25, which is a little bit early. But, um, you know, that's yeah. good. <laughs> Some <laughs> funny commentary is coming up. Yeah, no, he's, he's a fairly good, tough inside mid, um, Rowbottom. And he did, I remember leading up to the draft, he said he was cringing, like... He was, he was a bit nervous about BT calling his game. Yeah. It's like all the yeah, nicknames yeah. that were going to come out. The schoolboy one or whatever it was. What was it? The Where they played wrestling in the backyard or whatever, him and BT. <laughs> what? It was like Christmas time. It's Allegedly. an actual article. I'm not uh, making up jokes Allegedly. here. It's an actual article. Mm. Even though it does seem like something I would joke about, but it's an actual <laughs> article. <laughs> yeah, okay. true, true. Interesting. Um, but yeah, overall, like a pretty... Easy, not easy draft for the Swans, but you know, like when you have Blakey just falling, into uh, that falling into your lap a little yeah. bit, you don't even necessarily need to have the picks; you just need the points. Um, mm. You know, that's a, that's a slam dunk for them. And they did the cheeky maneuver, so they didn't give up their top pick. Yep, getting creative with West Coast, yeah. who is the next team yeah. to talk about. Um, involved in like three trade, three of the first live trades, uh, mm. which is interesting. Brady Rawlings at it again with his creative movements, uh, but picked probably the biggest first surprise. Of the draft, which was Xavier O'Neill at pick 28. And I don't think I'd seen many... I, I knew who he was, but I didn't think I'd seen anyone put him inside the top 40, 45. Yeah. They, must, they must, you know, really like him. They must have had him picked out mm. beforehand to take him at 28. Well, O'Brien, 
sorry, Ro- Rowan O'Brien's the head recruiter for the Eagles, and he said leading up to the draft, with pick 20 roughly, you're doing well if you get the 10th best player on your own list. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you know how clubs have their own list yeah, going yeah. into the draft. He says at pick 20, that it varies so much that you're probably going to get the 10th best player on your rankings at pick 20. So it's interesting that extrapolating that O'Neill was probably about the fifteenth player on their list, which is really interesting considering, like, yeah. I, like I said, nightmare or whatever. Um, Toomey like didn't really talk about him much, uh, and you know, Foley at pick thirty one and Valente at pick thirty two uh, were talked about way more, and yeah, that, that's just interesting to me. Um, and of course, the Eagles traded in, um, you know, traded down with Gold Coast, uh, who I thought were going to go for Valenti, and they took McLennan instead. Uh, to get another second rounder and they took a Ruckman Bailey Williams which is um, you know something they desperately needed what, yeah. do, what do you think about our need as a West Coast fan Louis uh, but for another Ruck because uh, we did already sign another rookie yeah. Ruck another rookie Ruck in the, that was recent wasn't it Cat B I think uh, yeah Cat uh, B. Uh, no not oh, Cat no, it's because B because he played a year it was a least, supplemental selection least? they call yeah. it yeah I don't know I guess it's Shoring up our stocks, I guess, especially with Nandui mm. doing. Got a lot of rucks. It feels like. Well, yeah, so I thought years. as well. Yeah, but this this guy, like, um, from my vision of watching him, he's very competent uh, forward. Like, he's a very True. very competent forward. Yeah. Uh, in, in as as well as being a ruckman, but instead of just being a solo ruck, he's someone that could probably spend a cons- considerable amount of time in in the forward line, Maybe which is handy in a second ruck. Yeah, exactly mm. right. Yeah. Ideal second ruck because comfortable in the forward yeah, line. Yeah, he's a bit of a Scott Lysett replacement. It's bloody like from the vision, he's uh, yeah, like very flexible. I don't know. <laughs> like, come on, guys. He's well equipped. No, but like the, he's talking to Sammy as tall. He's like picking balls up off the ground. It's like that's the, like, come on. <laughs> First day back, and you go. <laughs> <laughs> they must hang pretty low. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's pretty flexible. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh, look, oh, yeah, that's really fast. Let's just move on. Yeah, I was going to ask something about Anir. What? Where's he from? Uh, he's Victorian, Oakley Jarvis. Okay, because I was going to say with your earlier point, like about Valente and Foley, maybe getting more exposure, probably because they're the top end talent from their respective state, whereas he was probably buried behind all the Very true. other talent in Victoria. So these guys probably don't. Get and, as much and as they did, they probably won the championships, into... which is going to put yeah. more light on those guys as well. Yeah, how many South Australians did end up getting drafted? At least six, wasn't it? Oh, I couldn't tell you. I'd say more, more than that. I'd say more sure. than I said that. at least I'd think, say yeah. ten or something. If I had to six is just that. confident guys I could name yeah. off the top That's of my head. Sixty like no, percent of draftees were Victorian. Yeah, um, yeah, and we right. got drafted seventy five or something. So yeah, okay. yeah. So let's not work that out. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Bailey Williams is an interesting prospect for me because. Uh, well, it's a good pick for me because he's the only one we have under about 28 years old. True. Which is Quite, ridiculous yeah. when you think about it. So I think it made sense. Um, and then, of course, Charlie Cameron's brother joining West Coast as an academy. Exciting player. machine. Yeah, yeah. Academy so. played this on District's Colts. I don't know how that yeah. works It was out. the Lions that bid on him as well, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. He said he wanted to stay at West Coast because he wanted to make a name for himself and not be just the brother of Charlie. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, we're kind of rushing through the second half of this podcast because we're getting out of control of the time. So we'll just move on to the doggies real quick. Pick seven, Bailey Smith. Now, we talked about this briefly, how he kind of probably could have gone earlier, in my opinion anyway, had he not had issues stemming from not wanting to play in the state. Um, Alleged issues, actually. We don't know if that's true, but there's just been a lot of innuendo about that, Um, which is a shame. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know his circumstances, but you don't want, you don't want interstate clubs to be too hamstrung by, you know. We see the bloke talk about he wasn't going to drink yeah. alcohol. Or something. Yeah, okay. interesting. Yeah, I mean, he's only eighteen, so technically he should have only just been legal to drink alcohol for a few months anyway. So yeah, no, I mean, I, I know kids start drinking at like fifteen or sixteen anyway, but yeah, it'd be funny if he was still like seventeen. He's like, you know, I haven't touched alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meet the 17-year-old who doesn't drink. Um, but yeah, anyway, in terms of talent, though, Bailey Smith is, you know, yeah. I don't think he's that far off Walsh. I actually don't think there's a big gap between Walsh and the other midfielders, personally. Wow. Um, I don't think Walsh was necessarily the number one man in this draft. I think yeah. the coaches and Rankin were probably my preferences. And then, yeah, yeah, maybe Walsh slightly ahead of Smith, but not that far, yeah. in my opinion. Um, so that's a bit of a steal for the dogs. And then they've also added Scott West's son, Riley West, um, bid on by Melbourne, I think. Adelaide? No, I think it was Melbourne, eh? Okay. I'm pretty sure it was Melbourne. It I could have been Adelaide. I just remember Adelaide bidding on a lot of players. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah. It's at least five, I think. Yeah, it was really? annoying me because it holds up the fix by like five minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so they, I think they bid on Thomas, probably. And then they would have bid on someone else. Uh, Will Kelly. So, yeah, it would have been someone else too. But uh, anyway, um, you know, they did pretty well there. And I think they got Ben Kavara, who is a mature age player from the VFL. Yep, Williamstown, 22-year-old, so... Just um, a few Williamstown guys getting drafted. True, actually. The two Dockers boys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, big year for them. They'll probably be um, struggling next year with half their team. Going. Was, <laughs> actually, I'll look into that. That's aroused my curiosity. <laughs> what are you looking for? I'll <laughs> tell you when I find it. It's complete. This so it's an it's a relevant podcast. tangent, don't worry. Irrelevant. Um, so, yeah, I think Dogs Did all done right. okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so hard to really give them a strong evaluation like the day after the draft but you know all we can do is look at those picks look at the talent and think it's well, about right good few mids in we know that we like they're a bit like Richmond like they're they're um, you know high pressure sort of mid sort of players um, rather than they're big big players but um, yeah no it's a pretty good yeah pretty good haul I think yeah, yeah. bit of a yeah I say slam dunk. I've said that word five times on this podcast, but uh, it's just like, a bit of a slam dunk, you would say. It's with, just with the draft, I think it's there's no real standout. It's just a strong performance by all the teams, I guess. I mean, you can't really say, oh, these guys, you know, picked some really strange characters or like mm. someone did like particularly well. It's just a solid. It's a solid all yeah. the way across. I feel. I mean, obviously, with the hindsight, maybe in a year or two, we'd see, with, yeah, who's done better. But mm. at this point, there's no real. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really hard to make any kind of calls about winners or losers. It's a bit of a for, uh, like a flawed um, yeah. way of looking at the draft, especially the day after the draft. It probably takes three to four years, yeah, um, definitely, before you can actually really get a good. And I wonder if it's that. the nowadays with again we're talking about professionalism with the amount of uh, yeah resources put into list management and analysis and that kind of thing, where it's just there's less and less like roughies or random players being taken, and some teams hmm. like I don't know. There's a lot more. Yeah, I just feel that you're less likely to pick stragglers and things like that. Yeah, do you mean like reach for someone who's really yeah, speculative? Yeah, like I that. guess and that's like, true. I think it's just more of, I don't know, I mm. just feel like, as you said, like um, if a team's out of their top 10, fuck, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, saying. okay. I guess uh, maybe they're a little bit more conservative these days. I guess the earliest... Um, I think so, but maybe just like players a lot more researched and re- like. Yeah. More, you see a lot more of players nowadays, a lot more footage, that kind mm. of thing. It's just yeah. less likely to just choose a player that's... Yeah. Development yeah. systems Even in the past too. few years, yeah. I've noticed like there's been less of an emphasis on taking big mids and stuff like that that like, don't necessarily have the skills but have the potential where they're just like, mm. he's a big athlete. Yeah. have yeah, well, gone away uh, from that the past we've few talked, years. We've talked quite a bit about how, um, yeah. especially around like the um, sort of 2010, 11, 12, there was a big emphasis yeah. on more athletic guys. Yeah. And I think there was a lot of short guys who actually just missed out purely because they were smaller than 180 The flavour of the month was big yeah. body mids. And I think it's yeah definitely gone away from that. Yeah. yeah. A lot yeah. of them didn't pan out, realistically. Much more natural football. It's much more of a risk, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Because um, you're gambling on them turning into something good. Which I think maybe... Yeah. Well, Freo have sort of done that with Sam Sturt. And yeah. Maybe Richmond with Collier Dawkins. There always is going to be those sorts of players, but... They would have been yeah. maybe closer to top tens in the mm. in the past. Yeah. Definitely, and yeah. 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 Good point. Well, we have some questions, boys, on the Discord chat that I had. Uh, I sent a few messages saying send in your questions, and then halfway through the podcast, remembered <laughs> that I had done that. So we got a few questions um, from Greg, as but come up with a bunch. We've kind of half answered them, but I'll run through them anyway. What do you guys think about the Carlton and Adelaide pick swap? Um, I think we, uh, Joyce, I think you said it was kind of like a. You thought it was a bit risky on behalf of Carlton, is that what you said? Because they're uh, giving away what is potentially a top one to three pick. And uh, it's so tough to say. I've, we've said it a few times. Statistically, you'll actually do better with two late firsts than hmm. a top five. So on that, they've probably actually, they've arguably won that trade. But hmm. again, like I said, they could be giving up uh, Jack Lacosia, sorry, Sam Walsh or... Hmm. Uh, yeah, really, really good player. So yeah, I guess, um, like you said, they'd rather get the player now and just put the time into them now rather than having to wait another year, draft another player. It's just... It's time to move for Carl. Yeah, it and is. what I've seen from Stocker, he's worth a gamble. Yeah. I like I the look of him and his character and what Carlton need. 
I think it's a worthy I think he gamble. Would definitely, yeah, um, polish off having um, Walsh and Cripps and Dow nicely. He'll just be that really good fourth fourth yeah. mid to chuck in there. Yeah, that's true. He's pretty tough as well, like stocker. Yeah. Adds something a little bit different. Yeah. I think, again, that's just, I think it's a win win in a sense. Like, mm. Carlton can't get what they need and Adley can get what they need. Just They've got a bit like, of a trading history as well, those two clubs, with McGovern and Cripps as well. So Gibbs. they, they uh, Gibbs. not Cripps, uh, Gibbs. Gibbs, sorry, yeah. yeah. Um, so they're kind of like pretty familiar with each other, those recruiting yeah, teams. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Adelaide will be pretty happy with that as well, though. Yeah. Adelaide will be ecstatic. Yeah, Bank that top yeah. three or four pick. Yeah, it's um, incredible, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The next question from Greg is, what do you think, oh, we kind of answered it, but what do you think of Fremantle's selection um, of Sturt despite his small footy sample size? <laughs> that sounds a little bit penis as well, but... <laughs> Once again. Um, um, I can jump. Six, six games in the attack cup, I think he quoted. I like his potential, but at the same time, like as I was saying before, I really like Stocker and Stocker was still there who could yeah. have definitely mm. been a need for Freo considering the loss of Neil and everything like another midfield I think um, considering we got Valente at 32 that makes um, up for it um, that does make up I'm happy with it but if we had have got yeah maybe a a 192 centimetre half forward as well at like 32 or a more risky player at 32 then it would have been a bit um, Amiyanari true but um, I guess it's just so hard with Sam Sturt it's so hard with those players to really pass Mm. judgement on them um, so only time I like the potential. One. Let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah, I do honestly would. I do think he's personally more talented than the other forward options. Like if you're yeah. going for a non-key forward at that pick, then the one, other ones I were talking about were Ian Hilton, Curtis Taylor, and I think Sam Sturt's better yeah. than those two. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, as a West Coast fan, I uh, I thought it was good. Which player do you think went way above their ranking? That's a tricky one. We probably answered it as well. O'Neill, but... maybe. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pay that. 100%. Um, um, or at least in the media. Yeah. Uh, Eli Smith rose a little bit to 21, but not really that much. Sam Sturt, a little bit early. Would you say Chase Jones a little early? A little early. Yeah, a little. I, I've, heard him, I've heard him linked to Adelaide quite a lot. Yeah. But they, then, again, then again, they also had 16, so. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but not, that, not really that early. Like I said to you guys in the chat, like I think this was the most predictable first round I'd seen in a while where... Yeah, you know, I think last year, like Starsevich really bolted. Yeah, but um, even then, last year was fairly predictable as well. Maybe the top ten. Brandon to the Eagles was a surprise to me, but I guess he was still in the right range. Yeah, yeah that's it. A lot of people had him. I think it, to GWS, so like yeah. one or two picks before the Eagles. Yeah, I guess so. that's true. Yeah, um, but still, even all the way up to about twenty, I'd say twenty-five. Row bottom was the first time I went. Oh. <laughs> Because everything else, yeah, made sense to me. Yeah. Um, I think Stocker probably slipped a little bit. Sparrow went pretty early at 27 as well. Yeah. Um, and I, another slider was Valenti, like yeah. I said. Yeah. I thought he was going to go first pick of the day to West Coast. Stack not getting drafted at all. If, if yeah. 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 I guess not really, yeah, because they slide a bit. Just did <laughs> yeah. slid, slid all the way out. Slide and get sliding. Get sliding. Till the end. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and uh, a couple of other w, uh, WA talents, Marlon Pickett, completely overlooked uh, when I think yeah. everyone was very confident he was going to get drafted, Johnson. including myself. I thought, you know, with the mature age players coming back into vogue a little bit, mm-hmm. I thought Gold Coast... I thought Geelong were going to take uh, a punt as well. Tim Obviously, Kelly, he's got yeah. a good friendship with Tim Kelly. So yeah. um, that's a last-ditch attempt to kind of keep Kelly. That yeah. would have been that would have made sense to me. And Jai Bolton, the Sandover medalist. Mitch Grigg, the McGarry medalist, over- overlooked. It's almost... I've noticed like sometimes with mature age players, it's not the ones you think that will get picked that do. No, you're right. Like mm. it's not necessarily the best performer. Like with the Gold Coast had access to those um, three mature age players and Carlton had two. I would have thought, you know, Marlon Pickett, Mitch Grigg, Jai Bolton, you know, or um, it's not really the prolific like ball winner, yeah, midfield types that get picked. It was it's Nathan more... Kruger was one of them. We went yeah. to Geelong from via Carlton, I think. Um, Shane mm-hmm. McAdam was a forward, and then there was a Burgess as well. So like these, I, I'm sure these guys have more of a reputation over, over East. East. Same as Sam Collins as well, but still. Um, There's another interesting one, but because I remembered reading it, so I've re googled it. But there was that Michael Gibbons, who's like mod one multiple VFL yeah. best and fairest, yes, thank has you. been yeah. picked up. He's only 23 years old. Yeah, yeah. Mitch Maguire was another one I thought we might go early from the Neefle. 
Uh, I think he won their Rising Star Award. So, um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, like with these mature age players, it's hard to pick which ones get taken. I guess it's whether they think they have AFL attributes. Yeah. Um, Jai Bolton, they, maybe they don't. I kind of get that. Mitch Griggs had his, uh, like Bolton, has had his ha- shot at AFL before. And um, r- so, the yeah. rookie draft's very different to the AFL draft in that rookie draft is pretty much always picked on a need basis rather yeah. than a talent basis. I don't know. Like I think some players just get picked on random potential. I in I the rookie assume. draft. In the rookie draft, yeah, it's like free hits. I mean, Eagles have taken some random, random players. Harry Edwards was a random eighteen-year-old ruck forward this year that we just picked up yesterday, oh, yeah. um, mm. and we don't need a ruck forward. But well, well, I think you do. You just lost Lysa. You said yourself yeah. you don't have a ruck under the age of twenty-seven. We just took Bailey Williams, and then we just signed another rookie ruck as well. I don't think yeah. we really needed. Another. I think that's more of a safety net. I'm hoping Edwards probably is a key back. What do you call it? Hines, more of a key position. The um, category B, the basketball. Hines. No, I don't Patrick think Hines, so. whatever his name is. Uh, Patrick Bynes. Bynes. The basketball. Is it, the yeah. rookie. Oh, the Bynes. Eagles one. Yeah. I don't. That, I, they haven't described his position. Okay. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, they haven't described. <laughs> so I think he was in that tall forward <laughs> ruck <laughs> range and height. I think position. you'd know better than me. Probably. Sorry, what was that? I think he was in that. Ruck, key forward, range yeah, of size. Or even key back, I think, yeah. yeah. I think with converts, they often make them defenders because they, yeah. they are led to the ball, you know what yeah. I mean? As opposed to a forward's got to run their, and come up with their own running patterns and yeah. run to the ball, you know. Um, there's a different kind of footy smarts that's involved in being a forward, in yeah. my opinion. Um, Certainly. Compared to being a defender, we kind of just get behind the ball and punch it. <laughs> but that's probably short selling defenders. Oh, a bit, but I, get, I do get your point. One hundred percent. But when I played footy as well, it was always the footy smarts guys that would play forward, forward to the half, uh, forward yeah. to center, and then um, anyone learning the game would always try and be led to the ball by playing. You know, I just got center. stuck in the forward pocket, man. Oh, it's because of footy smarts. <laughs> 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 Left, right, out. <laughs> Not, I, I probably know stuff about the game, but actually playing it, it's a different, it's different isn't it? It's an entirely different yeah. place. Yeah, I'll be the first to admit I'm not the best player you've ever seen. <laughs> I, think, I think they say half forward is probably one of the hardest positions to play in terms of like you get lost where to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I th- when I used to play, I thought half forward was the best position by far on the ground. You're it's because you're not accountable. Because you're involved <laughs> in like all the play, so yeah. you can. But you can still just run forward and try and kick goals as well. Yeah, but I guess it's just imp- it's an important role and the, it's difficult and yeah. yeah. So anyway, a bit of a tangent. Yeah. I'm not the only one that says half forward's the hardest position to play. That's not just me. That's just something that other people have said. And yeah. I think Judd says that um, Chris Judd was the one who said like half forward to high half forward is like the most the, important position. It's bit, yeah, yeah, nowadays. Yeah, which I, I thought yeah there was a bit of conversation around that earlier. In I the don't year, quite agree with that. Remember we had that conversation earlier yeah. in the year when someone wrote an article about that? I think the game's still won and lost in the midfield, generally. Uh, still, but they made a good argument. Like Players like Dusty Martin play that half forty role. They're team's barometer-type players, some of these guys that play that role. Yeah, but I think for every player that plays that role as a half forward, I can name you a midfielder who plays just as an important role for their team. Dustin Martin? All right, Nat Fife, Paddy Dangerfield. I meant at Richmond. Yeah. Who plays as an important role as Dusty at Richmond in the what? midfield? Well, I meant I meant in the AFL. Ah, okay. You meant I thought you meant specifically on a team, like in terms of no, no, yeah. tension, <laughs> sexual tension. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Turn the aircon, turn the aircon back on. Put it back on, man. <laughs> All right. What other questions do we have? Uh, I'm just cycling through. It was general winners or losers. I think we kind of covered that with uh, analysis of each team independently. Um, I think we said Gold Coast did very well on talent. Yeah. Um, I don't think we can really say there were any losers. I guess St Kilda, as somebody else points out, I think it's HK Kiwis or was it Bangers? Sorry, I'm trying to read this. No, it's Bangers. He says that um, St Kilda went very risk averse. Uh, sorry, no, uh, they went risky because Bytel and King have both had pretty yeah. bad injuries. Probably a good call there. Yeah, yeah. he's he's a pretty uh, switched on draft yeah. follower actually, Bangers. Um, thanks for listening. If you're listening. If you've made it this far into this podcast. <laughs> yeah, probably Into not. the depths of our it. mind. Let's face it. No, no, that's cool. All right, boys, I think that, that's a good way to end it. Um, that was a long podcast. Probably our longest one since Louis was here last time. So, yeah. Common denominator. That, guys, yeah. Um, all right, so that's probably our last footy one for the year as well. Uh, it's been a massive year for True Footy. You know, 1,200 subscribers. 
Um, came I'm, from nowhere, basically. 25 yeah. podcasts. Out of yeah, out of nowhere. Yeah, literally. Um, thanks for coming along the ride. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm here at, the, here at the beginning, here at the end. <laughs> You're here for the cricket season. The cricket yeah, podcast. here for the cricket. There we go. So we will continue True podcasts, cricket. I like the thing, over the summer. So we'll, um, we'll be back um, as much as possible. I think we should do another New Year's podcast this year. That was a good yeah. one last year. And um, we'll talk, probably talk about some pre season. Yeah, for sure. Might probably talk about a bit of cricket, probably yeah. even yeah. just completely random stuff that we find interesting. Might even get a guest <laughs> or two on as well. I reckon. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Stuff. I've been saying that since we started this thing. Um, but I, <laughs> yeah. did, I, I didn't want to do it during the footy season. So, but now over the summer, yeah, we'll th- think of a few new things to do. Keep Sounds this true. channel alive. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks, guys, if you're listening. So, um, hit subscribe, please. Thank you. See ya. Yeah. Scoot. Oh.